we've seen a lot of tools we can use to migrate to manage instance. Today, I am going to show you how we can migrate our SQL Server VM to managed instance using managed instance link on today's Tales from the Field. If this is your first time finding us on Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. For all those loyal subscribers and to those new subscribers, come on in. Sit around the round table. Y'all have a voice in this game. Speaking of round table, on Tuesdays, we have a round table where we share links, logs, and posts put together by you, the MVPs of the Azure data community for the Azure data community. And then on Mondays and Wednesdays, we do this thing we like to call MS Tech Bits. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. In previous videos, we've shown how we can use data migration service, log replay service, a plain old restore, replication to migrate to managed instance. In this video, I'm going to show how we can use managed instance link to add to our toolbox. Here I'm flipping through some pages that will be included in the description of the video. I definitely recommend a read of these since they provide you a lot of information about how to use managed instance link. Okay, over here in SSMS, let's do this. So the first thing we ever need to do when we have a new managed instance and we're migrating to it from a SQL Server 2016, 2019, or 2022 is we need to test that connectivity. So we're going to go to Stack Overflow Large. We're going to right mouse click on it. We're going to go down near to Manage Instance Link, and we're going to test new connection or test connection. We're going to go past the splash screen here. We're going to make sure all of our requirements are met for our SQL Server. We're going to log into the appropriate managed instance. Here, we're going to put in an endpoint name. I already had an endpoint called new endpoint. You could pre-deploy this and give that endpoint any name that you want that fits your nomenclature. We're going to go ahead and hit next. It's going to fill in information there for us. Once we hit next, it's going to take us to our summary screen. Here on our summary screen, we're going to review and we're going to hit finish. And look at that. We validated that our SQL Server managed instance and our SQL Server instance can communicate with each other. Let's go ahead and fit, hit finish. The next thing we want to do is we want to set up our managed instance link. So we're going to go up to our Stack Overflow large. Now, keep in mind that you can do this with SQL Server version 2016, 2019, and 2022. You can do it from always on availability groups down here, the always on availability tab. You could do new SQL managed instances there. I like doing it from the database. So we're gonna select Stack Overflow Large. We're gonna to go to Azure Managed Instance Link and we're gonna select new. That's gonna take us to our splash screen again. You could click that and get rid of that. I'm gonna fill in DB Migration Stack Overflow Large here for my name. I'm gonna remove this checkbox. I'm not using this for disaster recovery. We did that in a previous video. I am just using managed instance link to migrate. So we don't need that checkbox checked. I'm going to go ahead and select next. Once I select next, we're going to want to make sure that our server readiness and our availability group readiness all check green. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and select next. It's going to load in our databases. I'm going to select one database here. I'm going to select stack overflow large. I'm going to go ahead and select that. We can see there that it loaded in and the status is success. We're going to go ahead and click next from this screen. I chose to do a rather large one, 400 gig plus, to kind of show how long it takes to do a migration using managed instance link. Hint, it's going to take about an hour and 15 minutes. On this screen, we're going to add our secondary replica. We're going to go ahead and select that. We're going to do the appropriate login, select our subscription. We're going to select our resource group. And in this case, I'm going to my data primary MI. With our managed instance selected as our replica, we're going to go ahead and select next. Once we select next, we're going to get a validation screen. With that being green, we're going to go to our summary screen. We're going to review that. And then we're going to select finish. Once we select finish, this is going to go through and you're going to see here that it's going to go check, 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 check. Well, what we want to see is we want to see that that goes into progress. Now, 
we have a couple ways we can check on our progress. We can run a sys.dm HADR physical seating stats. You can see there that it gives us a wealth of information about the seating process that is taking place as we add our managed instance as a replica. We can also create an extended event. This extended event documentation is gonna be included in the link of the video. You can see there that it provided us with a wealth of information as well. We can also go over to the managed instance. Now I know from a seeding process, it's gonna run as a VDI behind the screens and you can see that it would give us information. Once complete, our extended event is going to show us completed here. And you can see on the screen that our Stack Overflow Large is synchronized and that our Stack Overflow Large on our managed instance is synchronized. Now we need the failover. So we're going to go to our Azure SQL Managed Instance link again. We're going to select failover. We're going to go next. It's going to fill in some information here. It's a planned failover. We're going to do our sign-ins. Now I want to remove the link after successful completion. I wanted to clean everything up for me. We've already migrated, so we don't need to keep all the remnants around about the availability group or the distributed availability group. We're gonna select, I understand that we've stopped our workloads and we've ensured that nothing else is being loaded there. And then we're gonna delete the availability group from our SQL server as well. We're gonna to go to the summary screen. We're gonna hit finish. If, look at that, that was as fast as that was, that was the failover folks. I didn't hit pause or anything. So now if we look back at our SQL server and our managed instance, we're all cleaned up. We're no longer showing synchronized. The availability group information is all cleaned up. You can see I ran a query there against my managed instance link. Now a little hint, what I like to do after migration is on my primary database that was acting as the one that we were migrating from, I like to take that offline. It ensures that we have no new connections or updates going to it and that they have been migrated to the new managed instance database. All right, there we have it. As my good friend Bradley Ball would say here on the channel, what have we learned today? Well, we learned a lot. We learned that we have a new tool we can add to our toolbox on top of data migration extension, log replay service, plain old backup and restore, or even transactional replication. We can use managed instance link to migrate our database from our SQL Server 2016, 2019, and 2022 versions of our SQL Server instances. Really cool, right? And by the way, this was a general purpose that I was able to restore to in about an hour and 15 minutes and then make that cut over. You know where we like to keep this going. We like to keep it in the going in the comments down below. And as always, be good to each other. Concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it